Well, hello and welcome to Hillbilly Military Modeling. I'm glad you guys could join me for this video on the M18 Hellcat by Academy. This video will be the part five and the final reveal. So we're going to be wrapping up this project. So let's go ahead and get to it. So first up, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, testers, flat steel enamel, and we're going to be dry brushing this onto our tools. So if you watched part four, which was the painting of the vehicle, we had um, all of our tools painted up and the vehicle painted. And so here, what we're going to be doing is just putting a little bit of wear uh, onto the metal parts of the tools. And that German uh, Panzer Gray uh, looks pretty good underneath uh, of our flat steel dry brushing. Now the key to good dry brushing is make sure that you unload nearly all of the paint off the brush. That way it goes down nice. And you can see here we've got the uh, light wire marks on our tools. Anywhere where the tool might make contact with something or the ground like the shovel and also did the ends of the cleaning rod. Now we're going to use some CA glue. This is medium strength uh, CA glue. And uh, we're going to be attaching our hatches uh, for our driver and assistant driver. So I decided with the driver and assistant driver, both hatch sets, I'm going to have those open. Uh, since we're applying these uh, hatches and gluing them down over a painted surface, the CA glue is a must in order to get it to stick and and stay in place throughout the rest of our building process and hopefully for the life of the model. <laughs> so, uh, also, we're going to attach our tripod for our M250 caliber machine gun. And it goes right here on the rear deck. So at this point in the build, we're going to take X uh, 22 this is the gloss clear and we're going to spray that all over the vehicle in order to give us a good contact surface for our decals and here we're getting ready to apply our decals so I am using micro saw which turns out to be a mistake so I, I think I didn't allow the uh, clear coat to dry long enough I only allowed it to dry two hours I should have let it dry overnight uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, normally, I don't have any issues, and I can just lay down the micro saw. <clears throat> and then we can just slide the decal right onto the surface, make a little adjustment, and uh, push it down with a Q-tip. But what happened here is the decal stuck completely and I try to refloat it and get it to move but it absolutely would not move so <laughs> what what ended up happening is um, I ended up pulling the actual carrier film off of it as you can see there how it had a bad reaction with the finish which I go back in after it completely dries and I polish that out with a thousand grit uh, polishing stick and paint over it I quit using the micro saw and I went ahead and applied all the other decals to it. But uh, yeah, that's something to watch out for. Uh, I'd never had this bad reaction before uh, with micro saw on a finish, but uh, apparently I didn't wait long enough uh, for the uh, Tamiya X22 to uh, completely dry. Now. To me, it uses a solvent base. It's a solvent base acrylic. And you should wait uh, overnight. Let it dry overnight. So after the decals have completely dried, we do seal those in with the X22 uh, Gloss Clear. Just make sure that you use the X20A Thinner uh, with the uh, Tamiya acrylics. And here you can see on the front of the vehicle, it's a little shiny in spots, but we managed to repair that uh, whiting. So next up, uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, chipping. So I take and prepare a little piece of sponge. I'm using a real close cell 
synthetic sponge here. And since I'm using acrylics, I'm, I'm not worried about it uh, melting the sponge material. If you're using something that is uh, thinner based and not water based, uh, you're going to want to test your sponge uh, before you uh, commit to <laughs> using it on your vehicle. So I do make sure that I've got all the little apparatuses that I need for sponging. Water, a Q-tip, or cotton bud. Uh, also a toothpick and a brush. So here we're using the Vallejo Parched Grass Acrylic, and it's water-based. And I'll put a little bit of this flow medium in it to uh, keep it from drying out on us while we're doing our chipping. Because some of these chipping sessions can be, you know, can be a little long, so... Uh, now, from if you remember from the paint video, <clears throat> and if you haven't seen that, that's part four. Go back and look at that. But uh, we did darken up our base uh, color of the vehicle. So going back to the paint that we darkened, which is the parched grass, this will be our first chipping color. So it's slightly lighter than uh, the coat than the than the paint on the vehicle itself. And we're going to go ahead and lay down this just on the edges and on the corners. Anywhere where there would be uh, some wear from the soldiers and tools and uh, things scraping on the vehicle. Now, I don't want to over chip this vehicle. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to restrain myself because I do get carried away a lot of times when I start my chipping. Um, just kind of look at just the corners and certain edges. Now this vehicle came into service in uh, 1944 so it was late in the war and I'm not particularly looking to beat this vehicle up too much. Now it being a tank destroyer it can't take uh, punches with uh, other main battle tanks so uh, its tactics was hit and run and ambush so um, we're just going to keep our chipping kind of with the theme of a hit and run, shoot and scoop kind of thing. So I'm going to want to keep it kind of light. So here I'm just going to use a uh, hillbilly toothpick or a cocktail stick for some of you. <laughs> and I'm just going to go in and I'm actually putting in a couple little scratches and I'm using it also just to highlight. Uh, with our chipping color, the heads of bolts and things like that, uh, little bits and pieces on the vehicle, just to bring out a little bit of highlight there. Bet you didn't know you could paint with a toothpick, did you? But here we are. It actually works. So we don't want to forget uh, the main armament, especially the breech end of the, uh, uh, the main armament here. Now that's going to be inside the uh, inside the turret, but uh, we're going to want to make sure that we get the chipping on it too because the crew will be banging shells around on the guards and everything, so uh, you want to pay attention to that too because this will be seen from, uh, from the top of the vehicle. And so I'm going back in with just a little bit lighter color of our chipping. I added just a little bit of white to this. And we're just going to concentrate on real sharp corners with this. Just to add a little bit more visual detail on it. And it's just kind of do this to taste. <clears throat> However much you want to chip yours up is fine. Uh, this is just what I'm going to do with this one. So while we're chipping, we're going to take this XF57 buff. And just like we did in the other videos on these uh, pads uh, throughout the vehicle, we're going to show a little bit of wear on these with the buff. And so I'm just using a brush to apply these because I don't want the sponge to kind of get out, uh, out of control. <laughs> so I'm just going to focus just on these uh, on these pads that are on the uh, bottom side of the hatches and we also have these pads around the sharp edges of the opening in the roof of the turret so we're going to go in with that and uh, show little wear marks 
it's like chipping for your canvas and pads. So once we get done with our chipping and everything's dried, we're going to take this Tamiya panel liner black and we're going to use that around all the little corners and crevices and areas that we would like to emphasize. Uh, bolt heads and rivets and <laughs> whatever panel lines here you can see as it travels along the panel line. So you need to be as careful as you can with the uh, placement that's the word I'm looking for of your panel liner that way that'll minimize uh, the amount of cleanup that you're going to need to do later and this being an enamel based product I'll be able to come in with some enamel thinner and I can clean up any little spots and splotches that I don't want on the vehicle that look a little unsightly but panel liner is uh, very useful because it uh, brings out the details that otherwise gets lost in the uh, the color of the vehicle. And so this is this is probably one of the things that um, you can do to your model to bring it more to life than probably just about anything else that any single thing I'll say uh, that you can do to improve the look of your model. So if you don't use panel liner, I suggest you give it a try. And you, you'll probably really like the, uh, the look. Now you can spend quite a bit of time uh, with the panel liner, especially when it time, comes time to clean up. Uh, but your attention to detail in this area will really improve the look of your model. So here uh, I'm going to use the same uh, black panel liner go over our tracks here uh, this just will darken in a little bit that uh, acrylic rust that we sprayed on our tracks before we use the dry brushing method there to bring out the details on them uh, I think I just think it's just a little bit too rust rusty looking so we're just going to darken it up a little bit with the panel liner so here I'm going to use the enamel thinner this is testers enamel thinner to clean up uh, all those little spots and areas where we got too much panel liner on there. Uh, you need to wait until your panel liner dries before you uh, attempt this or you'll just end up with more of an enamel wash. <laughs> and we don't want it to flow out all over the vehicle. So using a small brush here, lightly dampened with enamel thinner. I do use a paper towel to get most of the enamel thinner off the brush. And I start my cleanup process. And so it cleans off really easy because we did lay down that uh, clear coat, uh, gloss clear acrylic paint. And that way the acrylics doesn't, they, they don't react with the enamel thinner. Just the enamel based um, panel liner so we're just cleaning that right off tidying it up and after all that dries I'm going to take and seal that with my model master acrylic uh, flat clear and we're going to paint all the parts so now I'm going to use a little bit more of this uh, CA glue I almost forgot what it was called uh, and what I'm doing is I'm preparing uh, some stowage for painting so I drilled a little hole in the items that I'm going to put on the vehicle and I'm just going to glue these cocktail sticks or hillbilly toothpicks <laughs> uh, into each one of these that I'm going to paint up and we'll trim them off because it's in the back side when we get ready to put them on the vehicle. So here I've got an assortment of uh, stowage. I'm not going to use all of these pieces uh, but I am going to go ahead and paint them up. So for painting, I'm going to use the uh, German Panzer Gray, and I'm going to reduce that for my airbrush. And we give everything a good coat of that. So that's our base color on all this. And that'll give us a good base for doing our other colors and our weathering. So after that dries, I'm going to come in with the parched grass. And I'm going to start painting our ammo cans. 
So here on our 50 cal, we already have our uh, ammo can that's mounted. And so I'm just going to go in and paint that, the parched grass. Now, most of these uh, ammo cans were a light color of OD Green during World War II. So I'm trying to stick uh, pretty much as authentic as I can. And here we're doing a uh, 50 caliber ammo can. So now we're going to use some flat tan, which is a beige color. It's, this is a, also an enamel, uh, Tester's enamel. And we're going to uh, dry brush our uh, ammunition storage tubes. Now these were a black cardboard uh, and during World War II. So what we're doing here is showing a little bit of weather marks where the black finish but in this case it's uh, Panzer Dark Gray but anyway um, we're just going to show some uh, wire marks on these tubes uh, using this tan and that's where the cardboard would show through and it'll help accentuate some of the details on them as you can see here it, it's not a lot but just a little bit so that it uh, brings out some of the details on them so now I'm coming in with a little bit of Vallejo white acrylic and I'm just trying to hit the high spots uh, sprained from from above here on these uh, satchels and these ammunition pouches here trying to create some false highlights uh, I'm not very good at this <laughs> so uh, you have to forgive me for that uh, you can see there I, it doesn't look too bad and then I come in with the uh, Vallejo parched grass and spray it with uh, that's our OD green once that dries, we're going to come in with this uh, flat tan again. Same thing that we used on the uh, ammunition tubes. And I'm going to use it and just dry brush this. Just catching all the high spots on these canvas bags. And that will kind of bring our canvas to life a little bit. Of course, any creases or anything that are on these bags will get a little bit more wear, collect a little bit more dust, and be a little bit more prominent. So I want to make sure I get the edges. But you can see here on the two that I've done on the right, uh, how they starting to stand out. And we're bringing out the details in these canvas items here. After I've done all that, I come back in with the uh, parched grass. Now that's the same color that we sprayed uh, these bags with, but if you remember, we uh, gave it a, uh, a white base undercoat. So now we're just gonna emphasize the straps and they appear just a little bit darker. Give us some uh, color modulation there. And it looks pretty decent. So now the next thing we need to do is uh, take a little bit of this uh, German Panzer Gray again. That's my new black and a really uh, fine brush. And we're just going to paint up the buckles on these bags very <laughs> carefully. Uh, and you can see here how that's going to look. That looks pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is we'll go ahead and clear coat that with the X-22. Uh, that's a clear gloss coat. And I'll let that dry. And once it's completely dry, I'll come in with the panel liner. And uh, just put a little bit of black panel liner on these bags. All in the low spots. And the seams, uh, they need a little bit of uh, panel liner too. And the same thing that we did on the vehicle, we're going to use the uh, testers enamel thinner and we're just going to clean up all the excess that's on there. So you're going to want to, it's kind of like dry brushing with enamel thinner and just go across all the raised details and clean up uh, any of the excess panel liner and that'll help uh, add back in some shadows and uh, interesting details here on our canvas. 
So now we're going to go back to our flat steel testers enamel. I'm going to do a little bit more dry brushing. So our ammo cans have had plenty of time to dry and I'm just going to hit the corners and the edges on these just to bring out some details. And you can just do this to your taste. They would have been pretty lightly worn. And now we're going to seal all of our stowage uh, with our Model Master Acryl uh, Flat Clear. Now it's time for a little bit of streaking grime. Now I have thinned this down to about a 50-50 mixture here in my paint palette. And I'm just adding a little bit and using a slightly damp um, wide brush just to pull that down across the surface. And this is going to give us some streaking effects. I don't really want this vehicle really heavily um, muddied <laughs> and dirty, but uh, the streaking grime here will help subdue the bright white uh, of all of our decals here, the, the serial number of the vehicle, and uh, the USA on the side and everything. Now once all that's dry, it's time to go ahead and assemble the uh, main armament here in our turret. Now I did scratch the uh, uh, the areas where the glue is going to contact. I'm using this Tamiya thick cement here to glue this in. And as you can see here, the breach of this uh, main armament sets at an angle. So I just need to get that in and get it nice and straight. And since this glue is so thick, it will hold itself in place and it'll dry and I don't have to worry about it sagging and being misaligned. So now I'm going to take this alcohol, it's just regular rubbing alcohol, and a cotton bud or a hillbilly q-tip. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to clean up these contact surfaces on the bottom of the turret. And I've also scratched the paint where the contact areas are for our turret ring. And we can finish assembling our turret. Now we hadn't done any of that up till now. And this is when the model really starts to come together for us. So now we really need to check um, where we're going to put all of our stowage and how much of our stowage we're actually going to use on this vehicle. And you're going to want to test fit all this before you commit to glue to make sure that everything's going to sit right where you want it to and look the way that you want the model to present itself to the observer. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, since we have all these painted surfaces, I do use uh, CA glue and attach these items to the turret. And you want to be careful that you... You, you don't misalign anything because once it's on, it's on. So now we're going to use these Vallejo dry pigments to create some rust effects on our vehicle. And the first spot that we're going to take a look at will be the screens uh, on the rear of the vehicle. Now, uh, I'm going in with the uh, darkest color first and just creating some... Uh, rusted areas. Now these screens are directly over the exhaust of the vehicle. Uh, it kind of wise out um, and goes to the left side and the right side uh, of the rear hull. So the mufflers are directly underneath this. So there's a lot of heat's going to come up through here and bake the paint off and um, cause uh, the paint to be chipped off and everything and so we're just going to add in some rust effects so the dark color gets the largest areas and as we go to the next lightest uh, fewer and fewer areas are, are covered and then in the very corners I also come in with some of the black pigment and show a little bit of the uh, exhaust uh, where, where the exhaust would exit in the corners of the hull so next up, we're going to use this AK Interactive Streaking Grime and show a little bit of fuel 
and oil spills right around these fuel caps here and I'm just using this straight out of the bottle and we won't thin this or anything So next up, uh, here I have a piece of wire that I've made. Uh, this is 18 gauge uh, automotive wire. I'm using five strands of that. And I have glued one end on it. And uh, I've, I've made this tow cable here because the kit tow cable was a piece of nylon string which didn't look very convincing. Uh, so the, the good thing about the copper is that we're able to bend it in the shape that we need it in and uh, it looks really good once it's painted up so that's what we're going to use on this kit so here I've done most of the contours uh, that we need and we're just going to set it up and get the overall length you're never quite sure how long you need until you get it twisted around wherever it goes and then we're just going to cut this off uh, right where we need it yeah right there and now I'm just going to use a little bit of CA glue and we're going to glue the other end on and I'm being very careful not to stick my fingers in it I don't want to be glued to the cable <laughs> and we're going to have to let that dry so once that dries we're going to come in again with our uh, German Panzer Grey and we're going to paint the cable with that now the German Panzer Grey is a it's like a weathered black so um, on this vehicle and, and, and I like using that color and once that completely dries I'll come back in with the flat steel testers enamel and do some more dry brushing. And we're just going to lightly dry brush this uh, just to bring out the details on the twisted uh, copper wire. Now I have gone in and painted the ends of these cables um, also. Uh, we'll paint those just the standard parched grass, which is our OD green for this vehicle. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So once all that dries, uh, we're going to use some more CA glue just to attach that cable to the vehicle. So I start with two points and carefully place this cable onto the vehicle right in those little clamps and I'm trying to be careful not to glue myself to the tank <laughs> so. and you may need to use a little device I'm using a, a pick here to uh, push things down and you don't need very much just a little bit but since these items are painted and this cable is actually metal uh, CA glue is the best thing to attach it with. And just do one point at a time and you shouldn't have any issues. Don't try to do all of them at the same time. And last but not least we're going to make sure that we get the front of it glued down into the little clamp there. And there we go. All right, on to the next step. I'm going to use this light slate gray from Vallejo. This is a dry pigment. And we're just going to dust up the lower portion of the hull with this. So we're going to make sure that we get it on the tires and uh, on the inside of the hull and inside of the wheels. This is just a uh, real light dusting application. And just because uh, the vehicle is a World War II vehicle doesn't mean that it has to be completely covered in mud and grime and dirt and everything. It's just whatever it is that you want to do to it. And uh, of course I will blow this off with uh, the airbrush later. So this kit is not a perfect kit and 
I can tell you right now, I, I would not recommend this for, for a beginner. Uh, there are issues that need to be dealt with, uh, but if you've got a few kits under your belt, uh, go ahead and tackle this. Uh, it's not that bad. Um, it, it, you can easily deal with that. Uh, did I make some mistakes on this one? Well, yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, we tend to make mistakes on just about all of them. But I think it turned out pretty good, and this kit does build up into a nice uh, display piece. Uh, and if you are a fan of the M18 Hellcat, uh, this is a pretty good representation of that. And it does come with plenty of options, uh, especially when it comes to stowage. So you will really enjoy uh, the options that you have available uh, to turn this kit into truly your own kit. So I think leaving the drivers and the assistant drivers hatches open on this kit uh, was a good decision, but that's the kind of decision that you need to make early on in your build. Uh, that way you don't, you know, uh, leave some things undone on the interior. So when I start a kit, I like to really read over the instructions and uh, start to plan out my build before I get started. Uh, that way I'm prepared for all the things that need to be done in order to have a successful build. And that will end this video guys and this build. Uh, so I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for your support. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go ahead and subscribe, it's free, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I post a new video, and that'll do it for this one. You guys stay safe, and see you on the next video.